Thank you very much. It's so good to be here tonight. The private garden on the Caribbean island was for Richard Branson. I met him in Tokyo. He was just in a bar, so I jumped in and joined. And then he jumped in a taxi with his mates, and I jumped in that too <laughs> and got to introduce him to permaculture. One day, I decorated my wheelie bin. Really? The Jap my time in Japan has taught me that if you just look after the humble things in life, the big things will take care of themselves. And I believe that. But people will tell me, Cecilia, if you don't stop this froofy stuff, you're going to end up in the gutter with all the spent blossoms and the dragonfly wings. And they're right. So along with my froofiness, well, here's... Uh, my share house in, in Melbourne. And what I've done is every now and again I'll move all the pink frilly stuff to the side and I'll hold a Japanese tea ceremony. And that brings calm and discipline to my rather frilly life. Without Japan, I don't want to think what my life would be like. I move, um, tonight I want to show you how you can use some of the tiny micro design ideas from Japan in your life in places where it counts the kitchen sink. Here's Maki. This is the day after I gave a permaculture presentation and she just grabbed me. Cecilia, you're coming with me. She took me to Zumba. She took me home where I stayed and I decluttered and reset her life. The teacher's really important. She started this Zumba class because her husband was killed in a car accident. She couldn't make herself happy, so she decided to make other people happy through Zumba. And that's the way ecosystems work. We're not alone. We need each other. And here is the kitchen from which Maki made the most amazingly delicious food every morning, noon and night. Maki, you don't need me to declutter your kitchen. You are doing fine as you are. Cecilia, I don't like being at home, she said. Okay, we'll, we'll go for it. So he, look, here's what we've done. First, we decided a colour theme. Maki's favourite colours, let's stick to those. We made a tower of Tupperware where she can see everything she owns. We made families. Glasses go with glasses. Things for, you know, grains go with grains. And then people started seeping into her life. These are other friends from my permaculture course. We make little Facebook groups where we'd all share our embarrassing photos and go and declutter each other's houses. Um, we put the chair outside. You should eat in dappled light every day of your life. And all about the energy of about 100 people set to work on this garden. Now, I've found people with gardens this bad are usually artists. They don't want to tidy. They want beauty. But they don't know how to do it. Um, and it hurts them to see their garden, so they kind of turn down the volume of their vision so that it's, it's not really there. Maki is round, everything about her. She's opulent. She, she makes deliciousness. So I knew I had to make the garden. I had to set the garden DNA to be the same as Maki. If I just tidy it, it'll just revert to messy again. And that's what I did. The garden looks like her. So here's some little micro designs that you can use in your kitchen sink. And like, use these tonight. You know how when you want to hurry and you don't want to tidy up, you say, I don't have to. When it comes to ice cream, you say, I'm allowed to. Just swap those two ideas. I'm allowed to straighten my shoes. With ice cream, I don't have to eat that. The reframe. The Japanese are masters of reframe. This is a kitchen sink. Brazier, um, stove, water for a tea ceremony. Make your kitchen sink, not tidy, make it a temple, a shrine of beauty and love. Don't wash dishes, I'm doing a dishwashing meditation. It's all about the reframe. Use three-point intersections. Not th don't, don't oppose anything, don't have lines that oppose. You don't want people talking to you like that, don't have it in your life. The boundaries can be much further than you think. After I saw this sink at my friend's house, I put the chopping board in my front garden. And all my volunteers, um, I put an ad in the paper, who wants to do my housework for free? And I got an endless supply of volunteers. That's what happens when you have embroidered dust cloths. Um, they were so happy. <laughs> I collect examples of um, force-free kitchen sink instructions. This one is from... Um, 3 triple, three CR, uh, Radical Socialist Radio. 
never tell people what to do. You're not in authority. Find what their passion is and sort of link into it and follow it along. So what's amazing about these school children? No collateral damage. Every day at lunchtime, they go and play in the mud. But because they're so in the moment, they're aware of what their limbs are doing, what their friends are doing, the velocity that the mud splashes, they can live dangerously and not have to pay for it. When you're in the moment, you can have such a high-value, low-cost life. When the bell rings after lunch, the children run, grab their cleaning things and clean like a tsunami. Not one adult in sight. This is the power of... Uh, the power of rhythm and the power of amazing architecture. That school was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Designers have power for generations. Um, once you get your kitchen sink like a shrine of beauty and love, everything gets linked in. You decide, well, I want a fridge where um, I can cook food without like plates and you get used to Tupperware cuisine. So here's some instructions. Go home, hide the, the draining thing. You don't need it out. Start tantric dishwashing. You wash, they dry, you put it away and it's ready to go next time. People get energy from each other. Decide your colours. Take away that block full of knives. Um, ikebana. Decant the 30% um, off you know, li dishwashing liquid into a nice crystal jug. Here's, here's me house-sitting yet again. This, this is me working for Richard Branson beside the most humble and tiny kitchen in the world. When you learn to respect humble things, life gets very free and light. So everything I teach is from my teacher, Fukuoka, who wrote The One Straw Revolution. Um, do nothing farming. Little, rice bo little seed balls, sit on your hammock, throw them into the, throw them into the uh, field. Permaculture's about... Mm. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Last quote, the purpose of, ultimate purpose of farming is the cultivation and perfection of human beings. You don't have a farm, but you have a kitchen sink. So go for it tonight. Send me a before and after photo. I am interested. Thank you.